the topic for this video is Morris traversal. So, so far the traversal techniques that we have seen are recursive and iterative. So, iterative techniques uses stack. In Morris traversal, we do not use recursion and we do not use stack. So, the space complexity in Morris traversal is order of 1. Basically, what we do here is we create links to the successors and then print the nodes using those links. So we're changing the structure of the tree so that we can traverse it and later we will remove those links so that the original tree structure is maintained. So we are given this tree. We'll create some virtual links. Let's say from H to D, from L to A. Using these links, we'll keep track of what is the next node to be visited. And once we are done with those nodes, we will remove these links. So this form of traversal is known as Morris traversal. So it does not use this recursion and it does not use a stack. Now let's see how we can do this traversal. So let's first see how we can do the in order using Morris traversal. So in order is left, root, and then right. So first we visit the left subtree, then we visit the root, and at the last we visit the right subtree. So for this in Morris traversal, the first step is we keep a current node which is pointing to root of the tree. So current is pointing to A because A is the root. Then we have this while loop which we run while current is not equal to null. So current is A. We come in the if part. So left of A is D which is not equal to null. So we come in the else part and now we have to find the predecessor for A. So to find the predecessor of a node, we need to go in the left subtree and then pick the rightmost node which is not equal to null or current. So to find the predecessor of A, we'll go to the left subtree of A. This is the left subtree. And then we'll pick the rightmost node. So the rightmost node in this subtree is L. The predecessor of A is L. Then we check right of predecessor. So the right of L is pointing to null. So this if condition is true. So we set right of predecessor to current. So now we have to create a virtual node from L to A. And current will now point to left of current, which is D. So these virtual links are required because we are not using a stack or recursion. So we need a mechanism to keep track of what is the next node that we have to visit. So we draw these virtual links from the predecessor and later we'll remove this so that we get the original structure of the tree. So in the next iteration, now current is D. We check the left of D. So left of D is H which is not equal to null. We come in the else part and now we have to find the predecessor for D. So to find the predecessor of D, we go in the left subtree. So H is the rightmost node in this subtree. So predecessor will be H. We check right of H. So right of H is null. So now we have to create a virtual node from predecessor to current. So from H to D. And then current will point to left of D, which is H. In the next iteration, current is H, left of H is null. So we print the value of current. So let's see, we print the output here. And then we go to the right of current. So right of H is this virtual link which is pointing to D. So current will now point to D. In the next iteration, so D is not equal to null. We check the left of D, which is H. So it is also not equal to null. We come in the else part. Now we have to find the predecessor for D. So the predecessor of D is H. Now the right of predecessor is this virtual link which is pointing to D. So this is not equal to null. We come in the else part. Now we'll break this link. So we're setting the right of predecessor to null. So we'll remove this. And we'll print the value of current. Current is D. And now we'll go to the right of D. So the right of D is L. So current will point to L. So if you see here, this else part is where we are restoring the tree. So this is the restore part. And in the if condition, we are creating the virtual links. So as we go along the traversal, we'll keep creating this virtual links and later we'll remove them by restoring the tree. That is the basic mechanism of Morris traversal. In the next iteration, current is equal to L. We check the left of L. So left of L is P, which is not equal to null. Now we find the predecessor for L. To find the predecessor of L, we go to the left subtree. 
So this is the rightmost node in this subtree. So predecessor will be P. So right of predecessor is null. We come in this part. Now we set a virtual link from predecessor to current. So right of predecessor to current. And then current will point to left of L, which is P. In the next iteration, current is P. We check the left of P. So left of P is null. We print the value of current. We print P. And now current will point to right of P. So right of P is this virtual link to L. So current will now point to L. In the next iteration, current is L. We check the left of L. So left of L is P, which is not equal to null. We come in the else part. We find the predecessor for L. So predecessor for L is P. We check the right of P. So right of P is this virtual link to L, so which is not equal to null. We come in the else part. Now we'll restore the tree, so we'll break this link. So we are breaking this virtual link. We print the value of current. So current is L. And then we go to right of current. So right of current is this virtual link towards A. So current will now point to A. In the next iteration, current is A. We check the left of A. So left of A is D, which is not equal to null. We come in the else part. We find the predecessor for A. So to find the predecessor of A, we go in the left subtree. So this is the left subtree. Now we have to find the rightmost node. So from D we go to L. So from L we can also go to A because there is a virtual link. But to find the predecessor, we have to go to the rightmost node which is not equal to null or current. And current is A. So the rightmost node in this subtree is L. So we have this condition because if we go back to A, then this loop will never end. So to break that, the predecessor is the rightmost node which is not equal to null or current. So the predecessor of A is L. We check the right of L. So right of L is this virtual link towards A. So this is not equal to null. We come in the else part and now we'll break this link. So we'll set right of L to null. And we'll print the value of current. So current is A. And then current will be pointing to right of current. So current will be now Z. In the next iteration, current is Z. We check the left of Z. So left of Z is null. We print the value of current. So we print Z and we go to the right of Z. Right of Z is C. In the next iteration, we check the left of C. Left of C is null. So we print C and we go to the right of C. So right of C is E. In the next iteration, we again come in the if condition. So left of E is null. So we print E and we go to the right of E. Right of E is null. Then in the next iteration, we check while current is not equal to null. So current is null now. This while loop terminates. So this is the in order that we have obtained using Morris traversal. This was the Morris traversal for in order. Let's see how we can do the Morris traversal for pre-order. So this is the in order pseudocode that we have just seen. For the pre-order using Morris traversal, so the only change is in the print statement. Because in in order, the traversal is left, root, and then right. So we were printing before we were going to write. In pre-order, we first go to the root, then we go to left, and then we go to right. So here before going to left, we print. So the only change in pre-order using Morris traversal is this print statement. Everything else is the same. The time complexity using Morris traversal is order of n. And space complexity is order of 1 because we are not using a stack or recursion. Now once you have understood the pseudocode for Morris traversal, let's see how we can implement this. All the source code that I'll be showing is available in my GitHub repository. Link of that is available here and as well as in the description. Now let's have a look at the code. So in the main function, I've created this tree. The root node is A, the left node is D. So in this manner, I have initialized all the nodes of the tree. Then I call this function Morris in order traversal and I pass the root node. In this function, I have created a current node which is pointing towards the root of the tree. Then I have this while loop which I run while current is not equal to null. If the left of current is null, I print it and then I go towards the right. Otherwise, in the else part, I first find the in order predecessor of current. 
to find the in order predecessor i go to the left of current then i keep going to right until i encounter null or until i reach the current node this is because we have virtual links which are pointing back to the original node so we do not want to go to the same point from where we have started so once i have found the predecessor i check the right of predecessor if it is null then i create this virtual link so predecessor of right will point to current and then i go towards the left if there is already a virtual link then i revert those changes and right of predecessor will point to null i print it and then i go towards the right now let's see the output of this program so this is the in order morris traversal for the pre order everything is the same just the print statement is done before proceeding to the left so that is the only change in the pre order using morris traversal so let's see the output of this so this is the pre order we start from the root then we go to left and then right so that was all for this video if you have any feedback or suggestions please leave in the comment section below if you like my content please do like share and subscribe to the channel it really motivates me to make more such content and until next time this is sandeep thapar signing off